What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another episode of the Smart Cow Moments Smack Talk Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, joined, as always, by Callum Wiggins. Hello. And Robert E. Felice. Hey. So today, we are breaking down what is maybe going to happen for next year's WrestleMania. We just got done WrestleMania XL, and we're going to look forward to WrestleMania XLI is the Roman numeral, WrestleMania 41, 2025, the road to WrestleMania, all of the things that we don't know is going to happen yet, but what would we do? How do we uh, think that the next 12 months should play out? All the kind of things that go along with the fantasy booking like that, so... As usual, we not only want to pitch our ideas to you guys and know what you have to say about our ideas, but we also want to know your ideas too. So drop them in the comment section below. While you're over there on YouTube, make sure that you also hit the like button, pass this around to anybody with the share button that's out there. Double check that you are subscribed. Ring that notification bell as well. And make sure that you click on some of the other buttons you can see there, like the thanks button. Helps us out a great deal. If you want to join the YouTube channel membership, you get access to the same stuff that you would on the Patreon, like the Dark Cast tier, the Pick Your Poison tier, anything like that's greatly, greatly appreciated. Most recently, we had Dark Cast where uh, we uh, talked about the Raw after WrestleMania. Rob got to talk about his thoughts on WrestleMania. So check that podcast out. That was uploaded uh, yesterday, day before. Um, we got, of course, our merchandise shops on Redbubble and Tee Public. Anything that you guys purchase there will go directly towards helping fund everything here going forward, uh, even though 90% of it goes to Redbubble and Tee Public, but, you know, whatever. Still haven't figured out the alternatives to that yet. But also keep in mind that if you do make a purchase on there, that is one of the many different ways that you have to enter the Funko Pop contest that is going on right now. It's got a few more days left before that shuts off. So get your entries in while you can. Many different ways for you to enter, most of them entirely free, just to be subscribed to the channels, The you know, both this one and Fanboys Anonymous, to follow the Facebook and Twitter accounts and all, to check out the posts on Smart Out Moment that are up there, too. Some of the posts, if you just click on that and you just give it a like or you, uh, you know, pop up over there on the YouTube or something like that, like they count towards that, too. But Redbubble and Tee Public merchandise is uh, one of the best ways for you to get a lot of entries on there, as well as subscribing to the Patreon and all. So if you want to win a funky, a uh, funky, <laughs> a funky Maya Via Rocco Pop, <laughs> I guess that would be a Rocky Maya Via Funko Pop. There you go. Enter while you can. Also vote on the Smart Madness tournament that is going to be ending very, very soon. I'm going to end that right before the hot tags tomorrow. So uh john cena or roman reigns who is the top wrestlemania main eventer of all time and keep in mind of course join the discord we have that up on there check out the link on the sidebar of it's mark a moment and uh yeah let's get into fantasy booking wrestlemania 41 first off let me cough because <coughs> that's been working its way through my voice for the past minute or so and i am going to uh i'm going to share my screen in a little bit but uh, I'm not going to share uh, entirely right now because it's kind of a mess when it comes to ideas that I have been working on ahead of time and all. Uh, we didn't want to do this, you know, super complicated and where we would do our own separate ones and then we have to do a consensus thing afterward. We could maybe in the future do that if you were all interested in hearing some kind of expansion on this. Of course, you could directly sponsor that through the Pick Your Poison, but I figured this is a more direct consensus thing. The three of us are going to try to settle on what we would do for if we just, I guess, you know, in the entire Paul Heck era switched over to the Smart Out Moment era immediately, and they were like, well, it's up to you three guys. You book what's going forward. I'm going to set some ground rules that I normally do when it comes to fantasy booking WrestleManias. I think it's reasonable to suggest that we have at most 14 matches, seven on each show. It seems like that's pretty much the layout that they have going forward. They had six and seven this year, seven and six, I should say. And we know that they have more time that they could fill in there to put that because they have all that downtime and everything. But they seem to be pretty locked in on that. They never have had over the two night WrestleManias 20 matches or so. I think the most they ever had might have been 17. And that's like counting, you know, a, a three second squash match and stuff. So 14 match limit. 
we don't need to bother with like match limits and stuff like on this one scheduled for 16 minutes and 35 seconds or some kind of crap like that. But I think another ground rule to set is that we're working with the championships that are currently out there rather than including brand new titles. Like we're not going to say, okay, well suddenly there's like a women's intercontinental championship or suddenly there's a hardcore title or, you know, anything along those lines. We're working with the current roster, not adding any more people into there that would have been like complete fantasy type of stuff where it's like, all right, well, in this scenario, they have a working relationship with AEW and we could do crossover stuff. So let's get Kenny Omega versus Cody Rhodes and let's get, uh, you know, let's bring MJF in and say that he signed and let's, you know, whatever. I think that there are a few people we can kind of be a little bit reasonable with when it comes to that, like. I don't, they haven't really fully, fully said that Julia is a part of the roster, like announced it, but it seems like that's a guarantee. So I think it's reasonable to accept that. I think Tamatanga and um, Jacob Fatu are people that we can pretty much put in the mix here, and it, it makes sense. When it comes to legends, I think the only ones that we can really play around with are The Rock and maybe John Cena. Maybe we can throw Brock Lesnar into the mix there, but we don't know what his status is. But you're not going to see, like, okay, well, we're booking Stone Cold Steve Austin and, uh, you know, The Undertaker and, and so on. And I think that that's kind of it for our ground rules outside of just trying to keep it a little bit reasonable when it comes to, you know, it's unlikely that. Tavion Heights is going to somehow make his debut in NXT and then immediately get sent to the main roster and immediately be put in the WWE title picture. Like, you know, let's be somewhat reasonable. Um, but we are going to give our, you know, little bits of our biases towards we'd prefer to see these certain people in these roles or, you know, maybe WWE isn't pushing somebody and we think that we can give a good enough story that that would be changing over the course of the next 12 months or so. And we don't need to book the entire road to WrestleMania. That would be way too complicated to get into like this match happens at money in the bank. And then this match happens at bash in Berlin or whatever. But some of that does influence some of that too. So uh, I have on like my screen that the, like it, it's not something that you guys can see right now, but Robin Callum can see it. A bunch of notes that I had written down ahead of time of when I was just kind of workshopping this myself. Uh, I also have the pay-per-views in order for us to kind of mess around with and some of the big names and all. Um, we got the roster all split up in one way or another. And I'm going to bounce around here and show you on the screen for the podcast when we settle on something rather than to see a flurry of notes and stuff. So... With all that preamble out of the way, uh, I think the great starting point to go for and just to try to launch this is it's much easier in my mind to focus on the women's division and then focus on the men's because there is such a big disparity of like you're working with half or like a third of the roster and on top of that, you're really only dealing with a few matches. Like at most, I think there would be like six matches uh, that we would do. But relatively speaking, there's probably like four or five. Um, I I know that we all agree on this, so it's one of the easy options. But I do have an alternative for it: Rhea Ripley versus Bianca Belair for one of the championships realistically probably the women's world championship because Rhea Ripley could just retain it over there if we were to do Rhea and Bianca what would your go-to other women's title match be because I have Charlotte Flair versus Jade Cargill down as the next that I would have and the big question mark that I had then was well then what do I do with Becky um I think Charlotte Jade could be a good grudge match with no title. I think Charlotte being the opportunity is that title. Like that's 
enough to get you through a Charlotte and Jade match without putting a belt on either one of them. I would probably say the other title match should be something like Becky against a Roxanne or a Bailey against Roxanne. Write those down as uh, uh, Becky Roxanne, Bailey Roxanne as options. What about you, Callum? Do you have? Uh, I mean, uh, you, obviously, you're not beholden to Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair either. But are there like two women's titles matches that you think you'd be like? Let's aim for this for next year. Um, I'd say that whether the women, the other women's title match, which wouldn't involve Rhea Ripley or Bianca Belair, because I do think that is the that is the right match to do to be like as big a women's title match as you can have. The old title match needs to have Tiffany Stratton in it. So that brings I don't, up really, the, I don't, I don't, I don't really care who she faces. It just has to be Tiffany Stratton against somebody. That brings us up a, an option that I had as like my, my secondary thing where I started to try to mess around with what do I do with Becky and um, Rhea and Bianca would be such like a lock but I had written down, what if we did Rhea and Tiffany Stratton and then Jade and Bianca or, uh, you know, some other kind of variation of that? Because can, can, uh, can, we, can we rule Jade Cargo out of anything, please? Out of anything that's title related until she's had a match that's more than a minute long. You don't think that well, there's a why- chance? that they could spend the next year building her up to be in that kind of position. That would make sense. I mean, I mean, if you're asking me if they could do that, then potentially you're asking me if I want them to do that. No, I think that she is, they've demonstrated already that they think that she's limited because they're giving her these squashes because even people that they do want to put in like strong dominant positions, they don't have them squash people that easily. It's more of a case of she's 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 squashing people because she's limited. She's not squashing people because they want to make her dominant. It's just kind of a it's just a, a byproduct of that essentially. So I think that I think that if they introduced like a women's mid card title, then maybe that would be where Jade would be at the moment. But I don't think that we should be considering her for a world championship position. See, that's why I have her in the like. Yes, you can do her in Charlotte. But you make that more of a spotlight match in the same way that they did Lesnar Omas. Like, big star against attraction. Or even just a regular feud like LA Knight and AJ Styles. Yeah, but the the women never get that. Yeah. Which would be something I legitimately changed if I was ever in a position like that. Well, I had uh I had the Rhea and Stratton thing down as an option because Part of me thinks that would be a fun pair for if you have Rhea as the baby face and it's kind of like, um, (laughs) like, you know, if Tiffany Stratton's the buff Barbie, Rhea is as good of like an antithesis opposite side of the coin as you can get for that because it's like, all right, well, she's also the big tough, uh, woman on the roster that can be like it's almost like the blondes against the brunettes it's the the uh preppy girl against the goth girl it's you know like uh and i think that they could actually pair off really well together in a way that we haven't seen them do yet whereas like we've seen becky and stratton and i do think that stratton's one of the main people that we can Realistically, I think if we're talking two title matches and we're not making it like a triple threat or a fatal four way or anything, Rhea, Bianca, Charlotte, uh, Becky, Bailey, Jade, Roxanne, you know, Tiffany Stratton, like that, that's kind of the group we're working with. I don't think anybody realistically is like, okay, well, we got to find that spot for Naomi or it's going to be a big year for. Raquel Rodriguez or Tegan Knox or anything like we're dealing with about like seven names or so. I'm totally fine for Jade not being in the title picture and stuff. Cause I also would pitch out there again, that whole China Memorial battle Royal idea 
of just let's try to do something where we throw a bunch of the women in uh, that and that could even be a spot where it's like okay maybe you give that to Jade and then we go elsewhere for them I'm always in favor of a spotlight ba- battle royal for the women because I think they all deserve more spots on the card but I do think you could get Tiffany Stratton into a championship match. I just think, like, I pitched Roxanne Bailey. Just do Tiffany Bailey. You know, Tiffany is the antithesis of a horsewoman. She kind of just came in and, you know, rose to the top. Bailey even has a baby face that isn't doing the hugger gimmick. Is still, you know, that alt chick, proud geek kind of energy and it's also just veteran versus rookie there's a lot of stories that you can weave into that i mean i mean my inclination is always to go for what i think would just be the best matches and so i would probably lean towards tiffany and um and becky because i know i know that's good i think they can do it better on a on a on a bigger stage um yeah, I, I, I think that I, I would be highly surprised if Bailey ever gets another one-on-one title match at WrestleMania in the rest of her career. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily happening. Unless it's like Mercedes comes back and they do some kind of thing like that or yeah. whatever. Um, Charlotte is, like, is, is, is a fair choice, but I think that her against Tiffany, essentially... You'd, you'd have to position that as Charlotte goes in as the baby face and Tiffany as the heel, but then Tiffany will get cheered in the match. So that'd be weird. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can't really see any other real options. That, like, there's, there are obviously top names at the top end of the, the women's side, but they're all kind of just the same names. I think Tiffany needs to be in there. To, Tiffany, Someone like Tiffany needs to be in there to mix it up. I don't... I mean, personally, it's just my. I don't see it with Roxanne as much. Like she's, she's fine. But I think she's, she's proven to be pretty bland as a heel. I think she's regressed in the ring ever since joining NXT. So I mean, I I, mean, I didn't comment in on it because I didn't watch the show fully. But um, I went back and looked a little bit of like um. I, actually, I, one thing that I did see from the takeover is like I was in the middle of watching like a football game with my team, and then I, like it was half time there, and I decided okay, I'll just look over and see what's happening in um on the takeover show, and it was the I think it was like the back end of the Roxanne uh Lara Valkyria match. I said, oh, this is really bad. <laughs> like, like, like they were terrible. I thought, I thought their match was. I thought what I saw of the match, I thought was awful. Um, I'm so, certainly not at all digging heel Roxanne. I think that she either needs to go back to the plucky little baby face, or she needs to figure out some other kind of way of being a heel. Like, I just, I don't like the whole. I'm gonna pout to the ring and then. Um, she's she's working it out. I don't think that she knows how to be a heel. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I think she's just she's copying me. other heels that don't apply yeah, to her. I'm going to yeah. be a but, heel character. No, I char- say, go ahead. I'll, I'll say the character it doesn't bother me. It's the fact that she she's gone worse at wrestling. Now I will say that's an okay position for someone to be in if they're in the women's tag team championship match with Roxanne and Cora. Because I think, quite frankly, even though Cora's injured. I think both. There's nothing else you can do in NXT. But, but it would have to be that WrestleMania would have to be timed in that small, like, month, two month window that Cora Jade is actually fit to compete. That is fair, but maybe. Well, when uh, is she Brockness... kind of like uh, projected to be returning? It was, a, it was an ACL, wasn't Halloween it? Havoc? Yeah, because she. They, they... Yeah, well, that it's, point, it's been a few months, but it hasn't been super long since then. Yeah, but uh, by if that's the case, then by Royal Rumble she'll be injured again. So <laughs> yeah. that's another tough thing, though, is like you you not only have to assume that Roxanne's getting called up, but that you have to then put enough emphasis on them that yeah, and and Cora as well with her return and all. Um, 
And we're not going to bother to book like NXT stand and deliver for this, by the way, for anybody that's wondering, like we're not doing the two nights of WrestleMania and NXT. Uh, but, you know, you can look at certain people and go like, all right, probably Thea Hale is going to be a big enough deal that maybe she's in the title picture there. And, you know, probably JC Jane and some other people. But um, I highly doubt I'll, that. I'll, I'll give you one idea for stand and deliver, and it's Julia versus Oscar. Cool. Love it. <laughs> there you go. Book it. Um the women's tag titles could be in the mix here. They didn't do them this year. They just decided to do a six woman tag without the belts involved at all. But that's another option to get instead of doing like a China Memorial or whatever. Um, we could play around with that. We could keep damage control together like the Kabuki Warriors and all. We could uh, mess around with the idea of like something with Liv Morgan in there since people want Liv Morgan to be doing more. Um, I guess maybe we could put Liv Morgan down as a list of like somebody that we could try to work into that title picture, but I would lean less towards that. And if we're dealing with this group of about 11 or 12, to 13 people or whatever, um, if we got two votes for no Jade in the title picture, then not only is that more of a consensus, but like I'm fine with giving her a different type of spotlight thing. So I'd move her off to the side, at least a little bit for now. Uh, I think we all kind of agree Rhea should be in a championship match, right? Yeah. And then probably Bianca should be in a championship match unless the alternative is the feud for Jade on the side is Jade and Bianca. I would put her in a championship match still. If you went with... Well, I guess let's put it this way. If we go Rhea's in a title match, the options pretty much become uh, it's Rhea, Bianca, Rhea, Tiffany. I don't think any of the other ones have as much of like a fun flair to it, right? Well, I'm willing to lock in Bianca, Rhea. And then as far as if I needed a replacement, like, God forbid, Bianca got injured or something. I'm doing a three-way with Lynch and Charlotte. I'm falling back on what, you know, works. I think that makes a lot of sense. And then the other title match being something in the mix of Tiffany Stratton, Becky, Charlotte, most likely. Maybe even a triple threat if we want to get all three involved in that. I wouldn't book uh, two triple threats. They've done that in the past, but I never care for it. I would say... What would the other triple threat be, though? Well, because I just said if Bianca goes Uh down, my my backup plan would be a triple threat with Charlotte and Becky. But I would say Tiffany, maybe even as the heel champion going up against... You know, take your pick. I mean, honest to God, Liv Morgan's a decent in case of fire break glass scenario if you know you don't have your your flares your baileys your beckys i think morgan could do it but again i'm just going with backup plans because i think the the names that we've already discussed would be the definite names i try to you know shoehorn into a title picture I know, uh, Callum, you said you'd go Tiffany Becky more than Tiffany Flair, but uh, yeah. what what would you do with Flair if we went Tiffany Becky? Um, I mean, I, I, I honestly don't know because I don't... I, I, it, like, if it's up to me, Charlotte Flair wouldn't be on my card, so... Just in the sense that, like, you're that tired like, her, or... Well, that she's, like, I think she's she's pretty washed at this point. I think the, the Rhea Ripley match was like her big kind of swung song moment and she's suffered so, several injuries since that point. So I, I, I don't know, but like if, if if it was a case of like having Tiffany against Charlotte, then Charlotte would have to put Tiffany over. I think basically at this point, Char- if Charlotte's in a title match or a big match for WrestleMania, she's only there to, she should only be there to put people over. So would uh, you feel comfortable locking Jade Charlotte as an attraction match? Well, as I like, I wouldn't do that because I think that would suck. But that's like, but that's, but that's. I mean, that's, I mean if we're if we're booking this in the sense of like, 
semi-realistic where they could go. Yeah, like keeping in mind that they are also telling us yes and no for certain things and that they want us to, like, you know, Charlotte's going to be, unless she's injured, she's going to be factored somewhere in there. They realistically wouldn't give her no match for Mania like they would then, with, like, uh, yeah, Nikki Cross or something. Then I'm happy for you to decide I would pay me part in that decision process for that one because it doesn't interest me. Then I'd put her with Jade. If we give ourselves like five women's match leeway, we go Rhea, Bianca, Tiffany, Becky, then it would be. Um, and then, then see the downside to the Tiffany Becky thing is we've seen Becky beat Tiffany in NXT. What would be the big hook of like that? that this would be where Tiffany beats Becky. It would be Tiffany being the champion. Becky comes in and be like, well, I already beat you in NXT. So that's why I'm going to beat you. And then Becky loses a mania. I think you tell. I think you tell a story now with uh, Becky, especially after losing to Rhea at this year's WrestleMania. That if you go into next year's WrestleMania and she faces Tiffany, Tiffany is the champion, loses it again. Then basically she she keeps losing the big because t- prior to that as well, she's also lost to Bianca for the title. Like basically every title match she's had since she's uh, it was the um, the Shayna Baszler one was the last one that she successfully won a title match at WrestleMania, and that's the mania that nobody remembers anyway, or nobody wants to remember. Yeah. Um, you basically just tell a story that she can't, that maybe she's kind of done in terms of like being a a world championship contender. You would keep world title of her for the entire year, have her face Tiffany for the title, maybe have her. I, I don't know. I don't know who would win the Royal Rumble out of those ones. I assume they'd go with Bianca again, so she has like a second Royal Rumble win. Probably, but um, I mean, because we also don't have to factor in the draft. Like we have no idea where people are going to go and. If we are looking ahead at WrestleMania and they like, you know, WWE calls up uh, us up on April 10th and they say you're booking WrestleMania, then we also influence the draft. So for anybody that's going like oh, Rhea and Bianca are on opposite rosters right now, it, it doesn't matter. The same as how we could call people out from NXT like Roxanne. So um, Which it, it's just it's just the concern that I feel like maybe this is just like my own inclination. It's the fact that it's. I don't want it to feel very samey in terms of the like it's always the same four or five people that are always in the big matches on these shows. It's like Tiffany's there to I guess add a bit of flavor to it, but in the other cases, oh it's Rhea again and it's Bianca again, and it's Becky again, and it's Charlotte again, and it's like but like, there seems to be no momentum for any of the other women on the roster. But would you realistically put any of the other ones in there would you be like uh really would, pushing yeah, for like ivy nival uh, nile or like a uh, chatsy or something like i think it's oh, no, oh, no not none of the ones that are like you know are actively bad but you know it's like but you know it's, I, I think that live like you could do a little more versus tiffany stratton as the other world title match at main year. yeah I, d- I did pitch that as a possibility i think just because yeah. just because that's too different women that you don't always see in the main event i know you still have to push the, like your big main eventers but realistically the only one of those t- the only one of those matches that would main event a wrestlemania potentially main event wrestlemania is Rhea versus Be- bianca so the other ones you can just kind of play around with a little bit because they're not going to be the big attraction for that show if we and- if we did Rhea, bianca tiffany becky we had a separate charlotte and jade match we do still have room for at least one more uh, to get some of these other names on there for like the women's tag titles or uh, a battle royal or something. We got Roxanne, we got Bailey, we got Damage Control, we got Liv Morgan, Naomi. Uh, yeah, not that we would necessarily be like, let's make sure we get her on the card, but like Natty or Chelsea Green or uh, Shayna. Like, we do have a group of that. Would you guys? lean more towards a, like a certain tag match or um, a non-title match or um, or just be like, all right, those three matches are the only ones that really matter either too. Like that's, it's not an option that I would pitch, but I mean, it's, it is an option. So given listening to the back and forth here, if you're asking me what I think they'll do, I think we probably locked it. If you're asking me what I would do and if trying to get more women on the card, then I'm taking Becky out of the Tiffany match. 
putting Morgan in there and giving Becky, let's say, like a spotlight tag. It could be, you know, Becky and Bailey against the team of uh, Blair Davenport and maybe like. Put a bunch of random names out your ass there, Rob, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, like, I'm, I'm just saying, like, if I was going to do that, it would be, all right, how do you get Becky on WrestleMania out of a title match? Probably putting her in a tag. What do you tag her with? Well, that's when you can start doing the whole her and Bailey need to prove that they're not washed up. And then you can have them face a team of two women who are coming in who can challenge them. See, what's weird is like when I was trying to mess around with this before, anytime that I ever see Becky and Bailey mixed together, I never feel like that really makes a whole lot of sense. Cause they seem like they're the ones that had the least crossover to me. It was always like Bailey and Sasha, Charlotte, Charlotte and, and Sasha, Charlotte and Becky, a little bit of Charlotte and Bailey and like Becky and Bailey, they almost kind of seemed like they were like by proxy of each other. Like, you know, they, they had like a friend group and it's like certain people aren't friends with each other unless the other friends are around. kind of. <laughs> so like, I, I feel like there's maybe something to the Bailey and Roxanne idea, but I would be, I wouldn't want to get like, Rhea, Bianca, Tiffany, Becky, Charlotte, Jade, Bailey, Roxanne, and a singles match on the side, and then just leave out all these other names like Asuka and Liv and, uh, you know, like the people that could be doing something else. Now, that could just be, hey, then they have matches on the SmackDown prior or something. But wait, actually, when does the uh, the Netflix deal kick in? January this January coming up like yes. before the mania 41 would be before mania 41. Yes. So they might not be in the position to do what they've been doing the past few years where it's like they put the Andre the giant Memorial battle Royal on SmackDown to appease Fox in the way that they would, if Fox is over there for, um, for SmackDown and the USA switch and all, um, I think they're putting the Andre battle Royal on, on SmackDown, SmackDown to appease to Fox. USA. I mean, they could like they could just keep that going, but they could also apply that to maybe like they they bring that back to the kicked out uh kick off or something countdown. Why would they Why would they want that? Why would they care about that? Like it's not like it's not like the Andre the Giant Battle Royal is a draw anymore. No, but they, you know it's an they, option. They seem to be really determined to like the WrestleMania panel is just that. Yeah, it's, I would lean more panel. towards not booking something on a countdown thing, but tossing out that that's like. That's something to keep in mind that it's not that we're necessarily beholden to that exact formula. Um, I could see like Bailey and Roxanne in a tag team fighting for the tag titles. But then again, I don't know who that would necessarily be against. Yeah, because once you get into that, now you're like. Do they keep do they keep it on damage control? I'm sure they're gonna lose it before the year is up, you know? And it seems uh, a little samey to just have like Bailey, Roxanne, and somebody like live against Asuka, EO, and Kyrie, because it's like, well then just Bailey's just feeding with damage control for a whole year. Like, why would you come back to that? Like real realistically, a good spot for Liv is the women's title match that isn't main eventing either night. Cause I do think there's a chance. Ripley Belair headline Saturday. It's one of the main possible options. It's that or like two or three of the, the men's options. Getting that I mean, fourth women's match on the card, that's I'm kind of getting stuck on that one. Well, because now you're now you're literally just playing a game of who how many can we throw on the card and who we decide that they're on the card because we can do a tag team scenario, but it's it's always going to feel like lesser than until we see these women utilized. Like I can say, you know, 
throw Shayna and Zoe and Nia and this one and that one in a tag match, but how do you make that make sense? I mean, realistically, WWE would be looking at something like, you know, a year in advance for WrestleMania. They'd be looking at, okay, if we're doing Rhea and Bianca, we got that locked. And then we can figure out backups if we need to. And the other title match would be, like, if we're going, like, you know, Tiffany Stratton, we got Becky, we got Charlotte, we got Jade, we got these other people. Would they be like, okay, well, that, whatever they would lock in for there. And they wouldn't be locking in the fourth most uh, important women's match. But, um, I don't know, maybe we can come back to that uh, in some way, but uh, to fill up that card or something. I'm cool with locking those three other matches and then putting like question mark fourth women's match or something in the meantime. What about you guys? I I would lock in Liv over Becky or Tiffany. You'd go Tiffany, Liv. Yeah. And then really leave it up to the air of what to do with Becky. Yeah, I I would say she's going to be in a featured spot, but we can always circle back to that. How do you feel about that, Callum? No, I definitely got Tiffany versus Becky. So I would feel realistically if like, you know, if we did get these creative positions and we were having this as like a legitimate conference meeting, I'd be like I, I think I need to put Becky in that spot and keep Liv as a backup in case Becky is injured. And then oh, that cool, way, man. that way, like I like Liv, I would want to push her and all, but if we could get her that fourth match, then that's give her a spot too. And um, kind of almost like the, the fourth match becomes like, you got Liv, you got Bailey, you got Oscar Roxanne, like figure out some kind of a spotlight for them. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer these over to what's not going to be like, uh, you know, the, the best um, way that uh, that we could do this. But um, the why am I not uh, being able to pop, uh, copy and paste this the right way? Yep, still not let me do this. All right. <laughs> This is the difference between working with both Excel and Google uh, Sheets at the same time. So I will restructure this in a way that looks nicer. Don't worry, everybody. But um, we are going to switch over to show you something in a minute. Uh, Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair. Rhea Ripley, Bianca Belair. Women's World Championship match. Then women's championship match would be Tiffany Stratton against Becky Lynch slash Liv Morgan with the, the B plot thing. A featured singles match would be Charlotte Flair against Jade Cargill. And then fourth women's match, we got Liv Morgan, Roxanne Perez, Bailey, Damage Control, question marks all around for everybody along those lines. All right. So then uh, I think that realistically, that's all that they would end up doing women's match wise. So, um, you know, I mean, we can come back around to that idea, but podcast wise, you guys can see on your screen. Now we got these up on there. We will come back to this spreadsheet in a moment when we figure out some other matches to go along with it too. Um, if we take all that out of the way and start focusing on the men's division again, I think there's just a few match ideas that you kind of already have to revolve around. Like we know that Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns, the rock, you know, CM Punk, Seth Rollins, this group of people are pretty much the ones to focus on uh, more than a lot of others. And the pitch that I had written down ahead of time, I, it all kind of depends on, do you want Roman and rock to be the match at WrestleMania and for the championship? I don't think we're getting Roman rock outside of WrestleMania. You guys agree, right? That's unlikely. 
Yeah, I wouldn't do it without the title. So you would know. you would find outside of Mania. Oh, outside. Okay. Um, because I don't think Cody is in a title picture for the World Heavyweight Championship. I think it's the WWE title. Either he holds it the whole entire year, or he drops it and he's like fighting back for it, or wins it back, or you know whatever it might be. But if I'm booking Cody in a title match and assuming Roman and rock isn't for the title, then there are only two names that I can come up with. Cody defends, or it's trying to win the title back from Randy Orton or Gunther. And if it's a non title match and it's like Roman and rock, it's for the title. I think that eliminates Cody and Gunther. I think that that becomes, you got to do Cody and Orton as the feud with that, without the title on the line. What do you guys think about that? If for whatever reason, he's not champion, I think Cody Randy is the only match that makes sense without the belt with the title. You know, the only person I think Gunther is going to be revolving around the world title. But I don't know if I wouldn't book CM Punk. Cody Rhodes. There's options for Punk, but I think that's something that's at least on the table that you have to consider along with someone like Randy for Punk. Because I go straight with Punk, I just go straight to Rollins, whether it's for the title or not. Because that could work as just a regular feud match or it could work for a title match. Like Punk could be the guy that wins the belt and Rollins has to win it back or um, you know, either one of them could be the heel. They could both be baby faces. I don't think both being heel would make any sense. That would be like too much of a jarring switch for both of them over the year. But I, I look at like Punk and I go like, I don't know if I'd go Punk anybody other than Rollins unless you needed to because of some kind of an injury or whatever. Like I wouldn't go like Punk and say McIntyre at WrestleMania. I think I would do that throughout the rest of the year at some point. Well, I'll bet. What about Cody John Cena? Cody John Cena could be another option. Um, I have a couple John Cena people written down, like uh, John Cena Logan Paul, John Cena Braun Breaker, John Cena Gunther was something that I was tossing around for the United States Championship, where Cena could maybe be the U.S. champion and lose it to Gunther if he wasn't fighting for the world title or doing any kind of bigger spot. But I like the idea of Gunther fighting for the world titles too, so I'm like, eh, I don't know if I'd really... Put him in the U.S. title situation. Seems like a I'm, downgrade. I, I, I'm thinking about it in the sense that Cena just said he wants to tell Hollywood to slow down after Christmas so he can focus on WWE and have one last run. And I think one last run for John Cena means at least you're making a serious go at the world title outside of just the idea of when he fights Roman and it's I'm John Cena, so I'm going to fight for the title. I think he could tell a good story with Cody in the road to it. And it's a way to get a huge match. But also let Rock and Roman have the main. I think almost guaranteed Rock and Roman would have the main event even without the title on the line. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so it's like night two Rock and Roman either for the belt or just say feud match or something. I think we kind of already lock that in. Um, But I'd pitch more so that it should be without the belt on the line. Then again, though, I do think of like some scenarios coming up where, you know, maybe we do see like Roman comes back and he has a match with Cody at a big show, like a SummerSlam and he fails to win the title back. And then that turns into the rock belittling him and kind of kicking him out of the bloodline or whatever you want to do with that story. And Roman feuds with like solo and stuff leading up into like a tribal combat match where it's Roman and rock for the, uh, head of the table type thing or something. Or you could have then after that, the rock is the guy to successfully beat Cody and it's Roman winning the title from the rock. I would 
personally lean towards not putting Rock and Roman for the title. We had to kind of like put your foot down on one way or another. Where, where would you guys lead? I mean, I didn't give a shit about Roman having the title this year. I thought that you could have moved on at the Royal Rumble. So no, I don't think it should be for the title. That three votes uh, for you too, Callum, or do you lean more towards that it should have the belt? I absolutely shouldn't have the title. You've just okay, had, cool. We've just had Roman have the title for the last three and a half years. You're not going to just give it straight. You shouldn't just give it straight back to him. All right, so then we're we're working with a an idea in mind of two separate title matches, Roman and Rock, as like a a feud kind of thing. Um, so I'll I'll put that out there uh, as like just a singles match for now. But um, Roman Reigns and The Rock is the heel, Roman's babyface. I think we're all agreeing with that, right? I would say so. We can kind of like pinpoint some more specifics of like what we would do. Um, yeah. When we come back around to this, but so then that means booking the two title matches. So if it's two title matches, world heavyweight championship and WWE championship, my notes and everything I had had down Cody Orton, Cody Gunther, punk Rollins, uh, you know, as like the main three variants for two spots. I would, I'd like all of them. Like I, I can see a reason why Cody Gunther is better than Cody Orton. I could see Cody Orton being better. I also, I lean a little bit more towards Cody Orton in some ways because I have more people that I'd like to see Gunther fight where it's like, maybe we do get Gunther Brock or maybe we get Gunther versus um, like Braun Breaker or something. I guess the Brock is another big thing. Do you guys think we're going to get Brock Lesnar by that time? I do. It's, it's very much dependent on how this, this case keeps, uh, keeps proceeding. Being as they just did, just Triple H just said, Brock's still with us, he's just home on vacation. I yeah. think we get Brock next year. Then other stuff Bar- comes out. Then other stuff barring, comes out. Yeah, and barring yeah. anything even worse coming out, if you're asking me today, I think he goes in. and I think he's going in the Hall of Fame. Do you think it's in Minnesota too? Because since they still haven't, yeah, well, that's, that's why I'm doing this based on the idea that it's in Minnesota. I mean, I've got like the graphic that I'm using is Minnesota colors and stuff because I'm assuming that's the case too. But um, it seems like it's either Minnesota or Las Vegas, which we could factor in in some ways, but I. I actually don't have any ideas of how you could factor in Las Vegas into this. You're not going to throw a casino about a Royal. At the end. <laughs> um, I mean the Brock part of it, like if Brock is on the card, my brain straight goes to Brock Gunther. Um, but then if it's not Brock Gunther, like oh. Brock, uh, Logan Paul is a match that I'd like to see Brock and Braun Breaker is a match I'd like to see. Like, a lot of those people kind of meld together. Brock, Gunther, Braun, actually Logan Paul to a certain extent. Um, we're probably going to get a Logan Paul match. Yeah, unless he just gets injured. Right. He's doing fine work, I can't imagine. I don't know why Again. you keep bringing up injuries. It's a fantasy thing. We don't really have to pretend that people get a game. Yeah. We- Yes. Well, because um, we're probably getting a Logan Paul match, and it's like, no, I think we're definitely getting a Logan Paul match. He's Logan Paul. Yeah. And he, there's a lot of options that I am interested in seeing Logan Paul go up against, too. Like, Logan Paul John Cena would be a hell of a, like, media spectacle type of thing. One of my, like, main John Cena pitches would be Logan Paul. I totally would love to see Logan Paul and Brock Lesnar. Um yeah, it's kind of got that like fight element to it. Brock Lesnar would whoop the shit out of Logan Paul and people would be having fun with that. The Logan Paul and LA Knight thing probably is going to happen relatively soon, but maybe by next year, maybe that comes around. Logan Paul, Braun Breaker, Logan Paul, AJ Styles, Bobby Lashley, Sheamus, you know, there's a lot of options for Logan Paul where I would lean more towards fantasy booking this card and going Logan Paul versus blank we'll figure out blank depending on who's left rather than like, okay, let's figure out the Logan Paul match and then work backward to the titles. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. So, Calum, if you were pitching WWE title and world heavyweight title for right now for Mania, what do you think you'd be trying to head towards? Um, this is, yeah, this is where the not caring part comes into the, uh, <laughs> I, I'd probably, I, I mean, I'd have one of the world titles have Sami Zayn in it, probably. Sammy's another good option, yeah. Because you tell the story that you won the tag titles, then you won the NFL title this year, and now this year he's going for the world championship. Um, and he could be, you know, Mr. Money in the Bank, for all we know. Like, that's in Canada. Money in the Bank definitely plays into plans for WrestleMania. King of the Ring needs to play into plans for WrestleMania in some fashion, potentially. I think that... What what one hundred percent? I would have would have had Cody. Cody would have lost the title by the time WrestleMania would have come around. Doesn't mean he's necessarily going to be in the match, but he definitely shouldn't hold the title for a year. I'm sick to death of title, champions holding the titles for a, for over a year every time. It's so it's so boring. WWE's uh, title structure because everyone holds the title uh, like up until SummerSlam, or if not to SummerSlam, then to WrestleMania. It's basically just on loop every single year. So. So I think that uh, Cody should have at least lost it by that point. I say like he could be in another title situation, but I wouldn't have him win the 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 Royal Rumble three times in a row. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that Cody even necessarily needs to be in the world title match. I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of like prepping myself internally for the what I think is the inevitable. He's gonna get like booed by the end of this title run. Oh yeah. I mean, I think that's fair. So he might he might have dropped down the card by that point, or not to have dropped down the card, but he'd be in like the kind of oh he's getting the John Cena reaction by that point. Um, All the more reason why I think a potential match with Cena is on the table. Yeah, I'm also having to put anything with Seth Rollins involved in because especially after what what happened at the end of the WrestleMania, WrestleMania and how WrestleMania as a whole went for Seth Rollins and the fact that he's not on TV and he's taking time off at the moment, I'm really like just turning around the idea that he might just be leaving for a while. His contract's up in a, his contract's up in a, a couple of months. We haven't heard anything about him resigning yet. Rollins, you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, don't, that, that I don't is... think that there's like any chance that he leaves. I think there's a good chance. I, I would I would say that well I'll put it this way, just knowing how how he spoke about WWE past, it seems very unlikely. But I think that let's say that if I was Seth in the position and I'm looking at Cody and what Cody just did at WrestleMania, especially like as up close person with T, then it's quite thinking. Well, how did Cody get to that point? He had to leave and then come back, a bigger star. So if Seth's kind of looking at that, well, if I ever want to be the guy, if I ever think that I can be that guy in the main event of WrestleMania with this, like, having this huge moment and everything built around me, I'm not going to do it while still being Seth freaking Rollins in WWE. See, I'm actually so, looking at it as like, wow, they really trusted me to have the World Heavyweight Championship and hold it for all the way through up to WrestleMania. Then they put me in with The Rock and they had me be like the the linchpin for the impetus for this like Cody thing. And I'm positioned in a spot where I would have been main eventing the first night against CM Punk. And you know, that like, I'd take that as like a huge win from this WrestleMania. Uh, yeah. See, I would take the complete opposite approach to saying like, Oh, you had me play second fiddle to Cody for the entire time. Even though my story with Roman is going back years and years and years that you've never really trusted me to be on that level with Roman. And then you had me losing the opening match, lose the opening match of WrestleMania in less than 10 minutes or about 10 minutes. And then I, I, I was involved in the main event angle, but I literally just got beaten up that entire time. I didn't hit one move of offense in that, in that, uh, in my interference with it. Best offense is a good defense. <laughs> so I had the thoughts that out there. I, I just th- I just think that Seth knows what pos- no he's at he's stuck at a certain level in WWE. I, I'm saying like the likelihood is still just resign. I'm just like but I'm just putting it out there a case of 
Not a hundred percent guarantee. Well, say if I if if I was him right now, I would I would be considering it if depending on what the offer I'd get from AEW would be. I'll, but I'll throw that out there. Um, I don't think Becky's a lock either, unless she was completely lying. She did say, hey, I'm within two months and no one's offered me anything. And there was even a report today that came out, we're recording this on April 10th, that they still haven't signed McIntyre. It's really weird. I don't know why they keep playing with this whole, like, like let's really... wait until the 11th hour type of stuff well, with uh, their contracts these times. We're talking about that, or the, the people that they're offering contracts to are just saying things, are giving people lift service and have no intention of re-signing. That's, I, I think people need to come to grips with the fact that like maybe at least one of those people that we all think is, oh, they'll definitely sign a new contract, is going to leave. Could be, yeah. Yeah. But that, uh, as I said, that's the excitement of like having a wrestling war. But I think that with, with the Punk and Rollins thing, it's a case of Again, with Punk situation, like, do we have a projection like, of when he's going to return too? For that matter, Ooh, with, Punk, with, Punk, yeah, well, that, that, yeah, because like, you know, if we if we had a full year worth of Punk, well, it's hard to get around. How would he not feud with McIntyre and Rollins within a full year? But if he's going to be away for the vast majority of twenty twenty four. And he comes back around in October. So you do Punk and McIntyre if McIntyre is still around. And then you're already at WrestleMania season. And I mean, you if we're, just, you know, Punk and Rollins. If we're taking the usual WWE approach of like, he, they say September, October, if you're really pushing it, you can probably make SummerSlam. And I'd venture a guess that he would. You know, that's just we, me guessing. What, uh, he's, already, he's already getting physically involved in. In with the stuff with McIntyre, that is also he's, not, true. Mm-hmm. he's not doing anything like obviously super over the top. But for, I mean, to be fair, based on his recent run of things, this is probably the most physical he's got in a long, long time. <laughs> uh, but um, I also wouldn't really be like, "Hey, Punk, you got to be here immediately afterward and risk it." Based off his history of injuries, I'd be like, "We can wait a little bit." You know, what's well, risking it at this point? He's risking it if he walks outside. Point, I mean, point, he's gotten career. injured from just uh, <laughs> it's, it's jumping out of the really crowd. Weird. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, I think that I'd say I mean if if it was October or around about time, then I think that you at that point you you'd save the McIntyre thing for WrestleMania because I think the McIntyre thing is way more interesting than Punk and Seth. But then again, they might change things by that point. But and Seth might have gotten like more more of a uh, got more of a clear direction to him. But I just don't I don't know Punk versus Seth doesn't. I've, they, they haven't like moved entirely away from that because he was saying things on commentary, but that's clearly not the hot hand right now. Punk is um, keeping it like he's keeping it warm, but I don't I don't think it's as visceral as people thought it was going to be when Punk showed up at Survivor Series. Yeah, uh, no, it was just a case of like, oh, that was probably a match that they were going to do this year's WrestleMania, so we'll just hold it over till next year's WrestleMania. But you've got. To, you, you can't capture that same sort of lining a bottle that you had first time where you had, oh, Seth's pissed off that Punk's here and he's the, the first person to come talk to Punk when he's out there and say some things to him and they'll jab with each other and then you have Punk's one of Punk's first big matches back is against Rollins. You've got to try and build all that back up again. And, like, from, not so much from square zero, but from a much lower position. So it would be, di- I'd say it would be difficult and it's almost at that point you're thinking oh you, we should have had this last year it feels a little bit okay so they haven't they haven't really gone with like so that they haven't gone with any sort of like organic or see what punks cu- gets up to when he comes back and then see where the rest of thing is heading it's just no we said we'd do seth versus cm punk last year so we're gonna do seth versus cm punk this year instead just it would, it would just feel like okay None, nothing they're going to do then is going to be as interesting because it can't that that whatever feud they get involved with can't culminate WrestleMania because oh they've got to they've got to face each other because that's what we preordained. So one thing, and I know we've all pretty much locked in Rock Roman, but I talked a little bit to Tony about this. I think Roman needs to try to kill Seth Rollins, like. The man threw away his entire run because he can't get over it. Roman should be coming for Seth Rollins' head. 
And that would be a fun, you know, grudge match scenario for WrestleMania if I was in charge of things, just because, like, he just can't, he just can't move past it. See, I would pitch that more for, like, uh, SummerSlam or so. But I, maybe this might come off kind of strange. I think maybe the resolution of Rollins and Roman isn't Roman beating Rollins to a pulp. It's them having a handshake. No, I don't think it's even to that point. I think just Seth needs to just beat Roman. If that's the route you go down. Roman should be losing matches now. I mean, if you're building up to the idea of him facing The Rock at Mania, and then it's the idea that Rock's got the bloodline behind him and Roman's kind of on his island, on an island on its own and has to be kind of the de facto baby face going into that, then he needs to have reasons for the bloodline to turn his back on him. And not even so much like he fails to win the title back from Cody. He, he can't, the chip on his shoulder is really Seth. So if he can't beat Seth still, then that's more reason to distance himself from the bloodline. So, so yeah, I mean, if that's the route and if obviously Seth's still around at that point, then it'd be a case of round about either SummerSlam or Survivor Series or something like that. I'd have Seth beat Roman. And that's, and that, and that put in motion the things that get to Reigns versus Rock. I'd also put out there that this is a very interesting thing to talk about. We've not even mentioned the current world heavyweight champion, Damian Priest. That goes to show well, how we he, I just assume he, that he is not going to be in the title picture around that time. He'll be in some sort of tag match or something, or some sort of like um, Judgment Day, like disbanded, and he's feuding against Finn Balor or something. Right. I point. think it's like we're all kind of just assuming Priest isn't going to be like either obviously still world champion because that'd be kind of crazy or that he would be like still hovering around the title picture. He's going to be losing that belt and then being in a different spot on the card, like maybe one of the mid card titles, but maybe just a featured match in another way in a tag or something. It is pretty interesting though, that it's like with all this discussion, we've talked about punk and Rollins and Orton and Gunther and Cody and Sammy and rock and Roman and, even solo and uh, you know John Cena and a lot of variations. What do you mean? We're, we're doing exactly what they do. Like it's just yeah, pick the, pick really the, pick cool the, yeah, pick the ten top people and just build everything around them. And yeah, the rest of them just fall just fall where they may. But it's interesting that one of those top ten people isn't the guy that's currently holding the belt. So it's like it's going to be an interesting journey over this next twelve months to see what happens with Damian Priest and if they like. Probably know by the time we come around to WrestleMania 41, we might end up being like, wow, yeah, Priest as like a baby face is like super over and, you know, something works really well. Like, yeah. And I mean, it's also going to be an interesting journey for the title because mm-hmm. now that there's a, full-time a different champion. Kind of, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's you, you're now dealing with a different level of it's not the workhorse is. belt that is the opposite of Roman's not here. Cody's going to be defending that belt. So how does the world heavyweight championship distinguish itself? Does it just defunct uh, back to it's even more of a B level title. And then punk and Rollins is like something that we can go shit. We don't need a world heavyweight championship on that. That's that's bigger without the belt kind of a thing. <laughs> Cause that could be the case too. Punk and Rollins could have like, I would lean more towards the idea that realistically punk's not, going to be here until at least SummerSlam, if not after. And assuming that Drew McIntyre is still around based off of Clash of the Castle and the likelihood that he probably would re-sign, I'd go, okay, you, you go Punk and McIntyre towards that last half of 2024, and then you can come back around to Punk and Rollins for Mania, whether it's a belt on the line or not. And then it just becomes... Do you do babyface, babyface? Do you do the title? Do you have like punk turn heel to freshen it up? Is Rollins a heel at that point because he's frustrated that he lost everything at WrestleMania and he takes a couple weeks or months back and uh, off and he's like, but now I I can't get the belt back. Now I'm all pissed because everybody, yeah, I sacrificed myself for Cody and nobody's going to sacrifice himself for me or, you know, I think if you do punk and Rollins at Mania, and you do 
Punk and McIntyre in the meantime, you still got to try to figure out something for McIntyre Mania too. And that's where I get into like, I don't know what I would do. With that's McIntyre. where I get into the, he's one of the ones who like Callum said, maybe he's just not there. It feels unlikely. Cause we're all thinking like clash the castle. Surely he'll be in Scotland for this major pay-per-view, but maybe not there. Maybe it's, it's always Drew McIntyre. Final, final and shot with something. It could be that too. Um, but also maybe it's Punk and Rollins for a feud, and it's Drew McIntyre and Sami Zayn for the World Heavyweight Championship, and that's where we get Sami Zayn in here. Could be. I also like the idea of potentially doing. Should pre? I don't. I'm with Callum. I don't think anybody should hold the title for a year, but should Priest do so? Priest, Sami Zayn. Um, I like the idea of Sami Zayn in the World Heavyweight Championship picture. I like it a lot. I would actually lean more towards. I'd rather see Sami Zayn defend or fight for the World Heavyweight Title against Drew McIntyre or somebody else, and then to have Punk and Rollins in a feud match rather than put the World Heavyweight Title on Punk or Rollins. Especially because I don't trust that Punk having the title is going to be something that you can really keep in mind with his injuries and stuff. So what do you guys think about locking that kind of in? It's like Punk and Rollins feud match, and then we go to something else for the world heavyweight title. Maybe it's uh, Gunther and somebody, or you know, whatever. Well, maybe I, I still think there's a heavy chance Punk wins the Royal Rumble, but could. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of like the idea of Sami Zayn in the world title match. And if I, I'm fantasy booking, I put him against Brandy Orton. I definitely, whether Cody is uh, not the champion or whatever, I definitely would not book Cody winning the Royal Rumble a third time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't want to see like Randy Orton going into Mania as champion. Cody was going to fight him for the title and Cody wins the Royal Rumble a third. I wouldn't be 100% opposed to it. And like, you know, compared to a lot of other things, because maybe it'd be kind of cool to see somebody do that for the first time ever. But I would lean towards giving it to somebody else for sure. I think if anybody's going to win the third Royal Rumble, in 2025, it'll be John. Well, I meant three in a row, but oh yeah, nobody's yeah. ever done. Well, that'd be kind of cool in that regard. But like I, I don't care enough about having Cody win a third in a row uh, for a, a random record that compared to some of the other options. Um, yeah, if you really wanted to get that Johnson treatment, you have him win three rolls yeah. in a row. <laughs> yeah, then people are going to start really uh, turning on him. Dijak will be right. I mean, it's, it's difficult because, like, in, in an ideal world, I'd want Zayn to win the Rumble and be the one that's fighting for the title at WrestleMania because it feels like that's the one thing he hasn't accomplished yet is win a world championship in WWE. I love that but idea. It's, yeah, but it's but it's the issue is also the fact of, like, have they missed their opportunity with him as well? Like, he had that... I thought Tony even had that moment last year. He probably could have had that moment this year if they'd have booked it correctly. But they... um. But um, is he going to be still as over and still in as strong as position with the crowd by like this time next year? There's every chance he could be. He's obviously a very tough to go, and he's beloved by most uh, people. But it's, but it it is. It, I guess it's, it's see how this intercontinental title reign goes, and if whether that seems to position him firmly in the mid card by that point. I don't, I, I don't think he should win Money in the Bank. That he's not the kind of character that should have money in the bank. Not as a baby face anyway. The only thing I'll say, and they did this once, but they did it with Brian and then they just had him lie, is he can win money in the bank and then just say, I'm cashing it in at Mania. And like let you know that he's going to use it in order to be the headlining guy of Mania. I never think that a baby face should do that though, because I would always lean towards, well, why do you want to wait all that time to win the title? Why didn't you just want to cash in and in, in advance and say like i'm i want to match next week on raw or something but i you know money in the bank is in canada and that doesn't necessarily mean you have to book somebody that's canadian or canadian adjacent that's a stupid term <laughs> canadian adjacent. Wait, 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 let's cut 
Let's go for it. I don't think a baby face in most cases, I'm saying all cases, but in most cases you should not win money in the bank. Most of the time, so yeah. Same so with King of the Ring, too. Like yeah. King of the Ring suits a heel way more than it does a baby face. When you get a baby so, face King of the Ring, you get Xavier Woods and within two months they don't care anymore. So I'm saying like with the um with money in the bank, you shouldn't be if money in the bank is in Canada, you shouldn't be building that around like a hometown hero winning it. Maybe one of the matches. But I mean I think that um McIntyre should win Money in the Bank because his whole thing about um, Damian Priest is that he's pissed off that someone used Money in the Bank against him and and the way that Drew McIntyre's character has kind of been is he's a bit hypocritical in that way so he's mm-hmm. going to go enter Money in the Bank, win Money in the Bank and then use it to cash in on Damian Priest and win the title back because that would be an interesting thing as well we've never seen a, um, a an, another like, moment of history yeah, someone, someone cash in on the guy that cashed in on him to win the world title back I'll go so far as to say this this is, uh, you know, just having this discussion now changes up because I originally had written Punk Rollins World Heavyweight title. I'm on board with this idea of Sami Zayn's climbing the Money in the Bank ladder and Drew McIntyre gets a big heel reaction in Canada by pushing Zayn off and getting the Money in the Bank briefcase instead. And everybody's like, God damn. And then at Clash at the Castle... Drew McIntyre wins the championship, has a match down the line with Punk. Punk fails to win the World Heavyweight Championship. Maybe Rollins is involved in that. Maybe not. It doesn't necessarily need to be set up a a, a whole 100%. And then Sammy gets his revenge on McIntyre from pushing him off of the Money in the Bank ladder in Canada by winning the Royal Rumble. Sami Zayn beats Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight title at WrestleMania, Punk and Rollins in a non-title feud. I think that that kind of covers uh, all think- bases, except for just what do you do with Damian Priest, which then it becomes, okay, well, he has the title reign, and then you do something else at Mania for him. I, I think I'd be happy to lean towards that approach. What do you think, Rob? Yeah, it's pretty good. I think it's, it was definitely something I thought was on the table this year, so... All right, so then let's uh, let's put these matches in there too on our um, our other little spreadsheet. Uh, that would be feud match: CM Punk versus Seth Rollins. Oop, I can spell Rollins right. World Heavyweight Championship would be Sami Zayn or Rumble winner. And Drew McIntyre as the champion from winning Money in the Bank, which we're already like, uh, then that kind of books Money in the Bank and Clash of the Castle and a couple of the other things too. That's This is one of the most efficient ways to do a lot of this stuff, which that also takes a couple of good people off the board too. And um, it comes back around to, okay, we're more than realistically then going Cody's in the title picture for the WWE championship. Does he go in as champion? Does he defend the belt against Gunther or uh, against Orton or somebody else? Or does he challenge for the title against somebody? Or do we not have Cody in the title picture? I think he's in the world title match. I think he should be challenging. Um, I think that... Because he could lose the belt to Gunther at Bash in Berlin and try to win it back. Or if you don't want to do two baby faces trying to win back their title, you could have Cody against Gunther and Gunther beats him or something like, you know. So I think that mm, I think that the Cody rock match needs to be for the title when that eventually happens. And that will probably happen whether that's SummerSlam, whether that's uh, the Saudi show in October or November time. I think that match needs to be for the title, so you can't have Gunter win the title at Bash in Berlin, if that's the case, because that'll be earlier. Um, Where is Bash in Berlin on the... Um, that's but, why I had That's why I had Gunther focusing oh, on the other belt. So, so it's Bash in Berlin is a few weeks after SummerSlam, uh, and we don't have confirmation about anything after Bash in Berlin for well, like... if it's after SummerSlam, then yeah, I think... Because you could do Rock and Cody at, Cody Summer at SummerSlam. Oh, it, oh yeah, if it, 
if if that's the case, then well, yeah, it just depends on the rock's availability. But um, but yeah, if they did that that way around, then I could definitely see Gunter versus Cody and Gunter winning the title. But then, would you do Gunter versus Cody again at WrestleMania? Because that's like a rematch. Then at that well, point, obviously. no, I wouldn't do that. I would have, I would more so do it at Bath in Berlin. No, well, no but, but they're the Mania, so Cody's wouldn't be in the main event of WrestleMania then for the title. Now, Cleveland is where SummerSlam is taking place, and we know that Logan Paul is more than likely going to be a big factor then. So if we don't have Cody Rock at SummerSlam, could always have Cody and Logan Paul at SummerSlam, and then, mm. you know, the Rock matches at uh, Crown Jewel or something. Um, yeah. They've set up enough with Rock and Cody that we know that realistically rock is setting aside some time within this next year to have a match with Cody. It'd be weird if they didn't. So whether that happens at a like specific pay-per-view or whether or not the belts on the line, because he even said like, whether you're a champion or not, I'm coming for you. And that could be, if we're booking yeah, but they this, they also bothered to get a shot of the rock holding the championship. So yeah, true. <laughs> But we're also booking this with the idea in mind that we don't want to have Rock and Roman for the belt. So um, whether no, whether Cody drops the belt to Rock and then somehow Rock drops it to somebody else or something, it's not going to be on the Rock for Mania for us. I mean, I, I mean, again, it's just like my personal preference. I think Gunter should be world champion by the time WrestleMania comes around, just because he spent so long as in a Canal champion, longest reigning one ever. The, there's only really one place that he can go now, and I think that yes, of course, you could do the Brock Lesnar match, but as I say, I, I find it kind of, and there's and again, it's just a personal thing for me, but I find it kind of icky. People were already talking about Lesnar coming back, and what's Lesnar going to do next year's WrestleMania? When's Lesnar coming back? And it's because of, like, why do you want him back? I know he's, I know, as I say, he's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, so it's just in ring stuff. But he's after the stuff that's come out. Why, why do you want him back? Is it you care that little about what he was involved in? So, you know, so so I, I I mean I'm just always in the in the mindset at least right now of like thinking I wouldn't Lesnar as far off from my thoughts of a Mania and any other WWE show going forward anyway. I, I'd very, rather have good to be very champion. well may stay that way. It's just with the way that over the weekend the language seemed to change. I just think that the door might have reopened. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. not saying, but it, it, yeah, it's one of those things that I know that the likelihood is that Lesnar is coming back and Lesnar will have a title match. But I'm just like, I don't personally want to come up with an idea for a Brock Lesnar match because I don't think that he should be at WrestleMania. Brock is a weird position too because even if Brock is back, he doesn't have to necessarily go up against anybody in particular, like. I look at it more as like if I have Cody and Orton, then I go, Oh, what do I do with Gunter? Oh man, the match with Brock would be my main thing. Less so than what do I do with Brock? Let's put him with Gunter, then let's take Gunter out of the match or something. Cause I could easily just be like, All right, if it came down to February next year and Brock suddenly is in a position where more information comes out and like puts him in a better light or, you know, whatever it might be. And he's like back in the mix and we've already had other plans. Brock and Gunther could have a match at any pay-per-view and I'm down for it. It would make more sense to have been at WrestleMania, but you could also put Brock against Braun Breaker and that's a hell of a Brock Lesnar match, you know? Yeah, I think or Brock against yeah. Dragon off or, uh, Brock against, um, Seamus or something. Yeah, like, you yeah, know, we the Seamus thing. Match. And, like, you know, there's there's more options with Gunter, I think. And there's more options with Brock than with Randy. Because Randy, I had written down some other options. Like, if John Cena would want to retire, maybe he would want to go up against Randy Orton. I'd be down for Randy Orton versus Braun Breaker as just, like, a, a match to kind of like, you know, Randy Orton versus Undertaker, Randy Orton versus McFoley, or like establishing Randy Orton. Randy Orton Braun Breaker could be an establishing Braun Breaker match if Cody's fighting Gunther. I think Randy Orton Braun Breaker makes sense. Like I said, 
I could see Randy Orton being the champion that Sami Zayn defeats. I, there's options for Randy, and the weird thing about Randy is he's a lot more naturally versatile than a guy like John Cena, where when they put John Cena in the ring with Austin Theory last year, it very much felt like, okay, they're trying to shoehorn Theory. This doesn't feel right. Whereas Randy was in the three-way this year, and it was fine. Like, Randy just naturally flows better. I mean, Randy Orton, Damian Priest could be a match. Randy Orton, LA Knight wouldn't be my main pick, but, like, that could be a thing. Um, I think the better story for Cody is Orton. But I like the idea of Gunther being in the title picture more. It's weird. So it's like I almost kind of want to have like Gunther either beat Cody for the belt at Mania and Randy Orton fight Brown Breaker or Cody to win the title back from Gunther at Mania and Randy Orton fight Brown Breaker in a way almost more so than to have Cody Orton for the belt and uh, Gunther on like a side match. But then again, like I'm, I'm down for Gunther versus Brown Breaker. I'm down for Gunther versus Brock. I do think that Cody's main two people though are Orton and Gunther. And it's kind of like, which one do you put with a belt? And then which one do you put in another thing? And if you had to pick uh, who's got the belt, who's fighting, who's who's got the belt, who's challenging, and then what do you do with the other guy between those three? If you're kind of building around them. Cody, Orton, and Gunther. My, my pitch would probably be... Uh, man, that's, see, now I'm going back and forth again. Um I kind of feel like Bash in Berlin should be when Gunther wins the belt. So I think I'd go Cody Gunther, Cody Gunther, Cody Gunther, and then Orton um, and Braun. And then uh, I would do the Cody and Orton match sometime this year. I, I, I mean, I, personally, I think Orton should be the first for like, the Cody faces for the title. Could be, yeah. Like, you know. Maybe I think I think that you want to avoid with Cody in order to extend this out as much as possible because now we just need to see what's Cody going to be like in a post bloodline or at least a post Roman as champion world. And I think that you need to you go, you go want to fall into the trap that you've done so many times with baby faces winning the world championship at Mania, which is you put them in a feud with someone who is just not anything special. Mm-hmm. You don't want to do you don't want to do Dan, Daniel Bryan versus Kane. You don't want to do Seth Rollins versus uh, Baron Corbin. You need to give him. You should give him a top, interesting feud and story right away, and Orton ticks that box immediately. Yeah, because if you put like Cody Rhodes against Sheamus, even though Sheamus is a former world champion and he's returning soon, nobody is going to assume Sheamus is going to win that belt. But if you put Randy Orton turning heel against Cody Rhodes, people will go, "Oh shit, Randy Orton could be Cody." So I'd pitch Cody Gunther for the title. Orton Breaker as a means to get something for both of those two guys. What about you guys? On board or alternatives? And I'm on board with the Cody Gunther thing. So yeah, I, I would like Gunther to go into this main year as well, champion. I'm on board with Cody Gunther, regardless of who's champion and who's challenger. And I'm even more on board with the idea of Ron Breaker, Randy Orton. All right, so then that, um, in the meantime, while I'm typing that up, it mostly would be, do we go um, Gunther's champion or Gunther's challenger? Um, I, I, would, I mean, I'd have Gunther as the champion. I think that, I, I just don't think that you should do another year-long reign. Yeah. I think, I think Austin and Cena have shown in the past that a guy can hold the championship for a majority of the year, lose it, and build to Mania as the challenger, and it'd still be effective. So I think you could have Gunther as champion. 
So I'm going to switch us to the screen share where people can see this is what we're currently working with. It's not in any kind of order yet, but we got a singles match between Braun Breaker. I'm assuming Braun Breaker is babyface and Randy Orton's heel. Um, Cody Rhodes challenging Gunther for the World Heavy- uh, for the WWE Championship that he would have lost probably at Bash in Berlin. Uh, World Heavyweight title. We got the Sami Zayn, Roy Rumble winner, Drew McIntyre, Money in the Bank champion and all that. Um, I just wrote down Tribal Combat for Roman and Rock because I yeah, that kind of gets to that point across <laughs> at least. Um, which then takes out Braun Breaker, uh, takes out Randy Orton, a couple other people like that, and leaves us with uh, still a good chunk of names that are, um, you know, worth kind of playing around with and trying to figure out for like the Raw and SmackDown tag titles, the United States title, the Intercontinental title. We haven't figured out Logan Paul yet. Um, I do want to toss out one simple enough option though. Ray Mysterio seems like he's going to retire. And he had said that he wanted to retire when he's 50, which would be this WrestleMania that we're booking now. Um, I can't see any better option for Ray Mysterio in a retirement thing than again against Dominic. And Dom just needs to beat his dad. He needs to be he so beats obsessed. Him. With his dad at WrestleMania, that he just needs to beat him. I, and that's like, uh, maybe it's like a hair versus mask type thing. Maybe it's just a retirement. Uh, I just, I kind of feel like Dominic and Ray is almost like a, a shoe in, even though we've seen that the past two things. But it's like, well, he lost the past two. Maybe he wins this one. And then I can't think of anything better for Ray. And for that matter, I, can, I mean, Dominic could be up against a lot of people, but if Dom is still as strong of a heel, you want to give him some kind of a decent enough spot. And I wouldn't book like Dom against uh, Finn Balor in a singles match or Dom against our truth or Dom against uh, Karrion Cross or Bobby Lashley or Dondrade or whatever. Here's my big thing. I, If you're asking me to pick one person on this entire roster that will not be in the company and maybe in AEW. I think it's Balor. Until I hear that he signed another contract, I'm kind of thinking he's out the door. I would approach booking the road to WrestleMania 20, uh, 2025 from an April 10th perspective as maybe Balor is gone, but even if he isn't, he's not somebody that I'm building a whole lot around you can put him against a lot of people and it's just like all right he could be in the intercontinental title match and it's fine what do you guys feel about dom and ray in like a retirement i'd lock it in i'd i mean if it's a if it's a retirement match mm, I, I, don't, I don't know i mean i I, I get where you're coming from with that, but it just feels like it's it's too it's too much it's, to do that again. It's so samey. I get you there. I I I, I, say I would do Mysterio if if it's like Mysterio's last ever match. Out the people that are currently in the company, I would have it against Dragon Lee. I mean, it could be something like that too. Um, it could be a tag match, even like Ray, Ray and Dominic in a tag. Again, somebody well, it could be well, Ray and could, Dragon Lee in a tag, or like you know, you could tell a story about whoever Mike Ray is facing, and this could be the Dominic baby face turn of him helping out his father or doing something. Like I say, though, I, I think that's also with Ray retirement. Like I don't think there needs to be the assumption that Ray would lose his retirement match as well. Yeah, he doesn't have to. But, it does um, seem like Ray probably is retiring at Mania next year, though. So that's there's, something no, there's I, a good chance. I wouldn't want to like leave that off the card and go, crap, we forgot about Ray, you know? Yeah. I mean, it probably makes no sense to do Dominic versus Ray again. It's just a bit, you know, I, I think that it feels a little, I was like uninspired, but it's just a bit, but is there, it's so obvious and it's so, you know, it's, yeah. it's, so, it's, so it's so obvious in this case of, would there be anything else to done time? So, because it's kind of like becoming that story with Dominic. It's just like whatever he does throughout the year, he was just going to go back to Rey Mysterio for WrestleMania, yeah. and that's kind of. So, if that's what's going to happen again, it's like, oh, just do whatever I want for the whole year, and then back to Ray. Right. But it's interesting what where Dominic kind of is at that point because 
I don't know. But it's not like we're talking about Dominic that much in terms of like world title or any other title picture. Like maybe in a continental US at some point, but um, yeah. I mean, I'm I, I'm okay kind of locking that one in for now because I can't think of anything else really that do, for Dominic realistically. I could find I'd probably name like twenty people in the roster that I'd be fine having Mysterio's final match, but uh, I can't actually think of anything Dominic would do at WrestleMania. I mean, like, if we went, like, pure, like, we have a video game and we're just saying who can Ray have a match with that would be a better match and you ignore like, storyline and you ignore, like, WrestleMania mystique and all that stuff, like, yeah, Ray's going to have a better match with, like, Ricochet or, you know, the or Dragon Lee or a lot of other people. I'd be more interested in Ray Mysterio versus Bronson Reed even than, than Dominic again, but... um but I feel like when you do the mystique and you do the retirement thing, it's kind of hard not to go back to Dom rather than to go like his final matches against, uh, say, um, Chad Gable. <laughs> yeah. uh, Gable, somebody that I mentioned, though, with like the Intercontinental Championship or, you know, the United States title or whatever. We have two of those titles. We've got the Raw and SmackDown tag titles to get into. Um, which we can assume are probably going to stay the Raw and SmackDown tag titles and not be switched over to uh, a, another unification or something. Um, United States Championship uh, and Intercontinental Championship. I I look at it this way. Look, our current champions most likely are not going to be holding those uh, titles. And... It could be anybody, and it really doesn't matter which belt, because the draft can move people around. the uh, The belts are interchangeable. They can even move. You know, Intercontinental title can be on either brand. United States title could be on either brand. I mostly just look at it as like, all right, which people do we want in mid card title matches out of this big group of people? And we've got a lot of people that we couldn't put in here. We got Damian Priest, we got AJ Styles, Andrade, Bobby Lashley, Bronson Reed, Chad Gable, Carmelo Hayes, Ilya Dragunov, Oba Femi maybe at that point, Dragon Leaf and Balor, Karrion Cross, Kevin Owens, LA Knight, Ricochet, Santos Escobar, Sheamus, Jinsuke, Solo, The Miz, Jey Uso, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, Austin Theory, Grayson Waller. Shit, we could see a big push for... Pete Dunne, we could see uh, Julius Creed. Like, so then I kind of go, okay, well, which big names do we not have anything for yet? And that's where well, I kind of just said Jay or so. Well, Jimmy and Jay and Solo and uh, do like, how do we factor them in there? Are they just a part of the Bloodline Civil War, or are they doing their own separate thing? I think it'd be healthy at this point. Have them doing their own separate thing. I wouldn't want to see a rematch of Jimmy and Jay. <laughs> uh, I, and I also wouldn't want to see Jimmy versus Jay versus Solo. I, I, think, I think by this time next year, they're back as a tag team. I was going to pitch actually Jimmy, Jay, and Solo against Tamatanga, Jacob Fatu, and Blank. Oh, and, I was. I was I was I was just gonna pitch Jimmy and Jay versus uh Fatu and uh Solo. Solo. And that could work too. And I mean that could even be the Raw or SmackDown tag title match. I mean that that's amazing. I given how much I know those four can do, I mean solo is gonna be a little carried. But you know, it's the I I, I, I think that um the rest of my match basically everything post them kind of splitting up has kind of demonstrated that at least especially in jimmy's case that the usos need each other they're, they're better together than they are separately jay's obviously got some potential on his own hey jay can be a world champion in three weeks he's not going to but he like he he's in a position where stranger things have happened and in a different scenario i wouldn't be opposed to it but i just wouldn't want damian priest to lose that fast Is that is that actually is that actually main event in the pay per view? Oh, it's going to be that's in, not the on main pay-per-view. event. It's going to be on the pay per view. They yeah. didn't like put a I, graphic I, up I'm, and stuff yet. I'm so shocked that's not just an episode of Raw. 
title match. It could be, but realistically, they're probably saving it for the pay per view. Saving it. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> you'd have to set up some other kind of match for the pay per view then afterward. So why do it on Raw and then immediately have to rush another number yeah, one? You contender? only have three weeks. I just assumed. Yeah, that's where they're going. And I was hoping they'd figure out like. You know, a bigger a bigger star to take on Damian Priest at some point, but that's fine. Not, not that not that I really care, but um, but yeah, I think the Jay and Jimmy will be back by a, just back of the tag team by that point. I think you probably have Solo and you tell the story of like Jimmy getting kicked out of the bloodline for being like weak. a bit of a joke, yeah, being weak out of all them, having been replaced by Jacob Fatu or Tamatonga or something. And then and it's then, kind of like The Rock's crew is Solo, Jacob Fatu, yeah. and The Rock. And it's like the, the Roman crew is Roman, Jay, and Jimmy. Yeah, you you eventually build it back up to that kind of to, to that kind of uh, divide between the bloodline. I mean, I'm totally cool with locking that down as a match, whether it's for the tag titles or not. And just being like, okay, well, if we can figure out a different... Uh, tag title situation then like yeah it doesn't have to be for the belts have like a um i think uso's championship match makes a lot of sense because when it comes to tag titles that's really wherever the wind is blowing at that particular time i mean look at awesome truth Mm -hmm. could anyone have called that when sammy and kevin won the titles last year So, all right, I'm going to put down uh, Jimmy and Jay against Solo and Jacob Fatu as a match, uh, whether it ends up being for the tag titles or not. But I'd lean towards probably not for the belts. Uh, just like, you know, Bloodline uh, continuation Civil War type of a thing. Um, that takes a couple people out of there that are pretty interesting. Uh, it leaves us with still the potential tag titles and the um, mid-card titles. Uh, let's take Solo Sokoa off the board, Jimmy and Jay off the board, keep Tomatanga in there because, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe Tomatanga just is in NXT or something. Um, as far as, like, people to build around for the mid-card belts, I think one of the glaring omissions we haven't figured out anything for yet outside of the Logan Paul match is Kevin Owens. And it would kind of suck to be like, uh, he's just positioned in a mid card thing again, but I'd rather him be either defending the U S or intercontinental title or fighting for it than to just be like, not on the card. So he's officially said that he never wants to win the intercontinental title again. Right. So I think it would have to be U S title. That I mean, he could be fighting for the Intercontinental title and lose. I mean, it seems a bit of an odd thing to... Why would he want to fight for the Intercontinental title if he's already said that he never he wants to win it He already said he doesn't want to win it, yeah. Do you know, think that like, he'll never even, like, challenge for it on the air? No. I mean, as I, he's already said, you know, publicly put out an interview. I know it's, like, an interview with, like... That's just mainly for wrestling fans. Oh, I think it was that's... like for wasn't it like for up up down down or whatever? Yeah, well, whatever it is, he said it. He said it in a public forum, which is easily accessible by anyone who wants to go watch it. He said, "I don't want. I never want to win the Intercontinental Championship again." Yeah. So, so he's got. So his character, and he's one of those people that what he says he kind of means. So, it, his character would never want to win the Intercontinental title again by that standard. So. I mean, uh, by that kind of rationale too, like we, we can kind of flip back and forth. It really doesn't matter. So it's like, okay, U S title situation, Kevin Owens in the mix in some way. And then, uh, I, I mean, one of, one of these is screaming like big multi-man, like, oh, back totally. Or yeah. Cause there's at, at least with this group of people that I'm like currently messing around, oh, I'll show people on the uh, screen What the hell. Why not? Um, this is the, the messy sheet that I've been working with and that, uh, Robin Callum have been seeing, um, you know, I'm throwing in there like, uh, Dragunov and, um, Carmelo Hayes are the two main guys from NXT right now that I could see being in there. And I definitely would lean towards doing something with them. 
and then like out of this big group this is a group of 23 people and some of them i think way quite higher than others like i do not think you would need to put our truth in a, a mid card title match and i don't think that you would need to put the miz in one or you don't need to put say ricochet in one or you know some other people but i i'm down to push ricochet too so these big enough names um i'll switch this over to the other sheet too in the meantime maybe that'll look a little bit nicer for people uh mid card us title intercontinental title a multi-man thing makes a lot of sense to me and i don't know if i'd go fatal four-way if i'd go six-pack challenge i would say that i probably would not even though i like the six-pack challenge for the tag team titles i don't think i would just replicate that again i think i'd go more for like mid card maybe like a mid card ladder match or something um and then it's kind of almost take your pick from a lot of these guys I love the idea of like Gargano being in that and Champa, but I'm totally down for them being Raw or SmackDown tag ta- uh, champions too. I love the idea of Carmelo Hayes being fighting for the championship. I'd kind of prioritize him over somebody like Shinsuke. I also like the idea of Sheamus winning the Intercontinental title. He's had hasn't done it yet. Maybe he gets that big spot at WrestleMania. For that matter, too, Sheamus against Ilya Dragunov. Like, just, you know, it's like... Sheamus Dragunov would be a fun match. That yeah. strikes me less as a WrestleMania match, though, and more as, like, a feud that we could see throughout the year. Oh, yeah, I can definitely see that being, like, a Bash of, Bash of Berlin match. Yeah. Maybe for a mid-card title right then. Yeah. I mean, I would like to see Dragunov involved in one of the mid-card title matches because I think that he's done great work in... NXT, NXT, and I think that he's the he's kind of like the mini Gunter <laughs> in many ways. So I think that he should be he can almost take that mantle. I'm not saying he holds the title for as long as Gunter did because we don't need like a reign that long again. But I think he could have a lot of fun with the Intercontinental title in particular. I kind of see him more with the Intercontinental title. I don't really see him holding the US title. Can't picture it in my head. But I would have um like. I'd I'd have if if one of them's going to be like the big multi man like either ladder match or some kind of just big multi man scramble thing I think it would be for the U S title just because I think that then you'd throw in people like Owens maybe L A Knight um throw people like Andrade or something like that in there whereas the other title I think you could have either a straight singles or some sort of triple threat match maybe have um Ilya Ilya in there. Um, I don't think, I don't think that this is going to be mean to say, I think you guys are going to agree on this for me too. I have uh, a separate thing on the side for Andre, the giant Memorial battle Royal people, assuming we're putting that on like SmackDown or something. I just threw names out there that I was like, yeah, we don't need to do anything with like realistically Cameron Grimes is not going to be fighting for the mid card title. I, you know, I hope that he gets a big enough, uh, groundswell of support to change things around but i just am being realistic dexter loomis is not going to be in there omas doesn't need to be otis tag titles maybe or whatever carlito jd mcdonough and all out of this group of these people for this this mid card thing i think we can move carry and cross over there too right he's on nxt yeah I like he's he, staying there i think we can move our truth over to the andre right yeah he's had his moment this year so I think we can probably move. I, I love the Miz, but I think we can move the Miz into like he'd only be fighting for those titles if he's in the multi man and if there's enough room. And if not, then he's in the Andre, right? I, th- I think he's either in the Andre or he's hosting or something. Yeah, he's doing yeah. some host. Uh, I'm talking to the big celebrity on Miz TV. Woo-hoo. Yeah, like he, he's doing a, you know, something where he's not going to take a spot over a lot of these other guys. As sad as it is, I think we kind of move on Shinsuke over into that group too. When you say sad, do you, are you aware that he was advertised for this year's Andre the Giant Memorial? He was advertised for this year's and he didn't even do it. And then he just loses to Dragunov. So it's like, I know if I'm looking at this group of now 20 people that we're kind of revolving around for these two mid-card titles, I know I'm picking 
a good number of them before I'm picking Shinsuke to be in a multi-man. Because we also, we're not going to have a multi-man be 17 people. Realistically, we're probably capping it at six. And even well, then, it's like, it's probably a fatal four-way. Well, I think I think that I'd like immediately, I, like in my head, I'm immediately ruling out Gogano and Champa as in single, in a singles feud. I think they're, they're fine for a tag title. I kind of lean towards they would be better in tag too, yeah. I, I, I love the idea of Gargano being intercontinental champion or something but yeah i kind of think so too and then that's like uh, carmelo i think is a guarantee to be in like this and i think dragon ops another solid pick for that too i don't know about some of the other ones like uh, i could see bronson reed being in there but i could also see him just being in the andre again because we're already down to um 17 of these names and yeah i mean 17 still a lot Theory and Waller could still be in the tag thing, but they could be in the Andre or they could be in the mid card title situation too. I think we all agree Kevin Owens. I think we all kind of want Dragonov somewhere in the mix. We all probably would want Carmelo, right? I'll be the one. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't care less about Carmelo being involved in it, so. What about you, if they call up Trick, where do you see Trick going, Cal? In front of Carmelo, wherever wherever that is. Okay, I'm glad you said that because I think that they just oh, trick, leave... tricks, tricks the tricks the star out the two of them. Carmelo yeah, but just... I mean, like on this card, do you see Trick? No, being Trick utilized? will still be an NXT. It's true, will still be an NXT by this point. Well, no, they're doing a. There's a good chance he wins the belt in three weeks or whatever, but they are doing a bit where if he doesn't win. He's leaving NXT, and yeah, he'll report, win the title. reports suggest they might want to call him and Mellow up at the same time. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, there's, I mean, there's, there's a chance that that happens, but like, I mean, if they were to call him up, I think they might just go with the whole. They might just retcon the stuff that happened in NXT. Yeah, them. that's that's kind of where I'm at. If they're on the card for WrestleMania, they're winning tag titles, or at least competing for tag titles. If Trick is in Raw or SmackDown in any capacity, he's teaming with Mello. But I think okay. that uh, I think it's more likely that Mello's brought up Trick wins that belt and he's still in NXT. I mean, I, I would go that if they wanted, to, if they're still entitled to having like NXT, you have like some drawing power to it because I think if you if you drop. Trick Williams from NXT, and you've also brought Carmelo up, and you seem to be keen on eventually bringing up Ilya Dragunov and Roxanne, and you've brought Tiffany Stratton up a little while ago as well. You're you're really burning through your top name talent in NXT. Yeah, Brown like, Breaker's gone too, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So who's who's really drawing people to watch NXT at that point? I know it's a developmental territory, but it's still a show on that will be on the CW. So they need people that are actually going to get people to tune in. And yeah, I, I, I doubt that. Um, as much as I think that he's got some like shine to him, that people like Duke Hudson or uh, or J- or Josh Briggs are really going to draw people to to watch them have a match on the show. Yeah, so, so I'm keeping I'm keeping Trick out of it for now. Um, we got like Lashley, we got Andrade, we got AJ Styles. I feel like AJ Styles is another big name. I like I would definitely prioritize AJ Styles over putting Chad Gable in the mix. And the I mean, way he's I mean, dealing with his yeah. career at the moment. Yeah, and also, like, just based on current trends, I would definitely rather have Chad Gable in the match than AJ Styles. I think there are two people I would put in the match. I'm not going to favor one over the other. I would like them both in featured spots. Um, if we look... Yeah. I guess if we limit it down to this idea, we've got uh, we got 17 people that we got to limit down to two matches, four belts, and then we how many how many more matches do we have that we can actually work with? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, actually thirteen. Shit, we're already at a spot where we're not even factoring the Raw and SmackDown tag titles, and we're over the limit. Um, so that kind of, I mean, maybe, uh, 
Jimmy and Jay Uso, Solo Sokoa and Fatu or whatever are for the the tag titles or something too. Um I could imagine that one of them's for like if the if you do the Jimmy and Jay for like the SmackDown tag titles or whatever they're gonna be called. So I presume by that point they won't be called the SmackDown tag titles anymore. But um and then the raw one I imagine would be some sort of fatal four way. I definitely don't think it'd be a singles match, that one. Most of these guys that we're looking at in this uh mid card thing are kind of gonna de facto have to go into the Andre. Most of them we aren't gonna be able to fit into this card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, we're kind of uh, we're at a limit where um, I don't know how we balance that out. Are we, are we out. doing an over the budget battle royal? <laughs> uh, we basically on two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. We almost have to put that Jimmy and Jay solo or whatever or or do something maybe we even have to cut that fourth women's match or something if we keep yeah, this at 14 then well that's why i was a little confused early on because we were talking about it like if we were doing it dream way the way we would like to do it yeah there'd be a fourth women's match if we're being realistic of course there's not a fourth women's match they we're lucky when they put three on the card yeah so that's uh yeah hey they get um they get a spotlight on SmackDown or something, unfortunately. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> and then we, so it's basically just those four championships the Raw, SmackDown, tag titles, the Intercontinental in the United States. And then most of these guys are being thrown either in a four way or something and then in the Andre. Um, so I guess it's just we got to figure out the Raw and SmackDown tag titles and we got to figure out the two mid card things and throw everybody else into the sorry pool which of course most of these people like tag title wise i think we're only looking at a few types of names too like we're looking at johnny gargano and tomaso champa we already talked about that theory and waller maybe viking raiders street profits pretty deadly like there's some you know good teams to pick from but i don't think that like we're gonna prioritize angel and umberto or um the good brothers necessarily if we go tag title wise is there any kind of groupings of um other means to get these other singles guys in there that you would like the theory and waller or do you think that like uh you guys would stick straight to pure both across the board just pure tag teams like three profits well, i mean stuff? you're saying that as though theory and waller yeah. haven't been presented as a pure tag team mm-hmm. since you know, uniting I think it's fair to call them tag team guys right now. I wouldn't be opposed to keeping them as a tag team the entire year. Like, uh, I think that's their ceiling right now. And that takes two more people out of the mix for the um, mid-card belt. Any tag situations you guys would lean towards? Like New Day or Creed Brothers New Day, or anything? of course. If they're on the card, they're not doing anything other than being in some kind of a tag match. Same with DIY. So we got a, a decent group of uh, tag teams. Um, and we could always do like a four way or something like that too. But I kind of, I prioritize DIY, Street Profits, A Town Down Under, Creed Brothers, New Day. Those five teams I'd put above all the others. Even though I like, you know, pretty deadly, I like Dun and B. Any group that stand out to you guys? Oh, I said I think that's fair. I think what you're doing is fair. No, I mean like uh as far as like, you know, this team against that team. Um Brothers DIY, assuming they stay on the same brands, I think they'll be in a raw tag title situation. Um, I mean, for the purposes of this podcast and not going on 
even longer than we already have. We could just be like, all right, there's some kind of combination of these teams. There's two of your matches, you know? Well, yeah, I think that's. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I was going to say, like, we go for two hours and, like, you're trying to make me think about what the Raw and SmackDown tag team titles for WrestleMania is going to be. It's like, they don't, they, they, they won't, they probably won't know that until a couple of weeks before the show even yeah, happens. Yeah, so they so. <laughs> well, leaving WrestleMania is in 17 days. Yeah. It's this. <laughs> All right, so let's just, we, we got five teams there. If we needed a six team and we did like two triple threats or something, like they would they would do it. Um, that's just a matter then of figuring out the people that we would uh, group into the mid card and then who falls short of being on the WrestleMania card out of this group. So I think AJ's a big enough name. Damian Priest is definitely somebody that I would. I would feel weird if he was in the Andre. Um, Bobby Lashley is a big enough name. Uh, Sheamus with that IC title is an interesting thing. Um, hate to put them in the position, but like I think even like Santos, Andrade, maybe even Lashley, Bronson Reed, Chad Gable, Dragon Lee. Finn Balor, I'd throw in the mix there too as well. LA Knight, Ricochet. I, I kind of feel like all those guys could be on the Andre. I think that's fair because, again, we're doing our best, but that's one of those you won't know until you know. And if nobody's really standing out for... Actually, uh, <laughs> I guess the simplest thing for us to do is this is our group of our realistic 15 people that we would revolve those two mid-card titles around. And kind of do something similar to what we would do with the the uh, tag titles, where we just go like, all right, it's some kind of pairing of these guys, and it's kind of a cop out, yeah. But like, yeah, we are running long, so like, um, these guys are in the mix, and who we need to put in the title situation at Mania, and who has feuds throughout the year, it'll dictate it later on. But none of these probably would stand out as like that's the match to do for that belt, the way that like we were trying to book Gunther this year for the Intercontinental title. Realistically, right? Yeah. And everybody else goes in the Andre, which means that our two match card or two night card for WrestleMania without picking which goes on which night and everything. So we don't need to bother with that. We're looking at a group of about 15 people that could be in the U S and the intercontinental title scene, a group of about five, six tag teams that could be in the raw and SmackDown tag title scene. Um, I'll show it on my screen for anybody that's wondering. Uh, we're looking at Jimmy and Jay Uso as like the babyface pro Roman group of the bloodline civil war against solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu and the pro rock side of it, a retirement match with, Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio, Braun Breaker and Randy Orton in a featured singles match, kind of in the spot of the card that like Orton Rollins did in the past and like Orton Punk. Orton's good in that kind of role. We've got Charlotte Flair in a singles match against Jade Cargill, basically kind of the equivalent of the Randy Orton to Braun Breaker thing. Our Money in the Bank winner is Drew McIntyre, screwing over Sami Zayn, who fights back the rest of the year, wins the Royal Rumble, beats Drew McIntyre for the World Heavyweight Championship. We got a featured singles match in CM Punk and Seth Rollins, just for a feud. Kind of uh, the opposite night equivalent of the tribal combat match, Roman Reigns The Rock, although that's the main event. Becky Lynch with a sub of Liv Morgan against Tiffany Stratton for the women's championship. Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley for the women's world championship. And Cody Rhodes trying to win back the title from Gunther that he loses for the WWE championship at Bash in Berlin. That sounds like a pretty damn good WrestleMania 41 to me. I'd be down for that. Yeah, I think if all those players are on their game... Can't get too much better. Yeah, it looks like two good shows. 
And then, of course, if we had the ability to incorporate more and convince everybody to like cut down on the <laughs> on the fluff and put like two more matches on the card or so, we'd probably put a fourth women's match, maybe something revolving around Roxanne, Bailey, Liv Morgan, Damage Control, like those kind of major names to kind of revolve around. Maybe throw another match in there with like some of these other mid card guys and kind of uh, take some people out of the Andre because the Andre we know it doesn't really matter. And if not, then, you know, Hey, then we throw the Andre in there and everybody goes in there or we throw the Andre on SmackDown and you know, whatever it is. I think that this is, this is pretty good setup. It looks messy on the screen for anybody that's uh, looking at it. I don't feel like necessarily just spending time rearranging that right now. I'll make it look better in the future or something maybe, but that would be our fantasy booking of, WrestleMania 41, at least as far as April 10th is concerned before even dynamite tonight. Cause who knows if anything happens on this episode of dynamite that makes us change our minds about like punk or anybody else. We don't know if like people are going to jump ship to different companies. We don't know if Julia is going to go in NXT, win the women's championship, but then already be set up to the main roster. And we got to do something with Julia instead. We don't know about the Tama Tonga stuff. And I don't know. Any of those kind of elements, it'll be fun to go back next year and see what we got right, what we got wrong, what we were like, wow, we were heading in this direction and they went completely 180 degrees in the opposite. <laughs> but I would be down for this being WrestleMania 41. I think that'd be a hell of a show. And if you agree or you disagree, you let us know in the comment section below. Tell us what your card would be. Tell us how you think we're crazy for going in a certain direction. Anything else you want to chime in about, just chat it up. Do the same on Discord. Do the same on the page on smartcatmoment.com. Do the same on Facebook and Twitter and, you know, any of the other kind of things that are going on like that. Of course, as always, make sure that you go to amangotree.com and you follow and share and favorite and follow, uh, like, and blah, blah, blah. All the other things that are on that page. Fanboys Anonymous, Smart Cat Moment, and Tony Mango related. And if you're following me... Obviously, you should be following these guys, too. Yeah, and if you follow me, you can follow Dude Felice everywhere. Check out Fightful.com because, hey, if there's any chance of early Mania plans getting out, it's always going to be over at Fightful.com and Fightful Select. And you can also check out what Callum has going on. Yep, you can follow me on Twitter at Wigmeister14. Check out the power rankings, the first power rankings of the 2020. 425 season as it were with the uh, start of Wrestlemania so you can check that out to see who's going to be on top of the list for this week I think you probably have a pretty good idea but just say <laughs> just check it out to make sure and then Fantasy League is on hiatus for the time being but it will be back in the coming weeks where we will be drafting our initial teams to determine who will win next season's one who out of me and Tony will win next year's Fantasy League <laughs> no I, I'm winning this year Rob's going to make a run for it. <laughs> what did you say uh, on the, the dark cast? You, oh, you're going to play yeah, with your heart instead of I your... Got, I got to use my brain instead of my heart. Which is <laughs> the reason I lose these things. Well, current game plan for when we come back around to this fantasy league is to do this actually on what would end up being like this big draft week. Uh, we know now that the current game plan for WWE with the draft is to do that Uh, In between, when we will be doing coverage for Dynasty and for Backlash, so around the April 24th range, we'll have, I guess, Smart Cut Moment Draft Week, and it'll be the Fantasy League draft, and we'll also preview the WWE draft, talk about who we think needs to go where for the Raw and SmackDown rosters, and then when we start getting into Backlash predictions the week after that, we'll kind of like look back on that SmackDown and that raw and be like, all right, now the the draft is the thing. Let's, you know, kind of assess that heading into backlash and stuff. So draft week at the end of April, stay tuned for that for fantasy league and WWE. And of course, stay tuned for everything else that's happening on here. Uh, on smart moment on the YouTube channel, at the very least, the current game plan is that you'll be hearing us again on Friday for the hot tags. We'll break down whatever we need to break down from this all in situation and more. And then next week 
We already got AEW Dynasty to talk about, so pay-per-view point predictions coming right up after that. Post-show immediately following that pay-per-view, you know the score. Make sure you have those email alerts set up. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you hit the like button on this. And we will see you next time, everybody. Thanks for listening. This has been another Smart Cat Moment, and we're being counted out.